My name is Driti. I am a physical geographer and I use satellite images and remote sensing technologies uh, to map um, human alterations which, which are done at the coast. One of the main research which I do is to look at uh, land reclamation. It's a process where um, land is being built at, at the coast. The, the unique part of the recent reclamation is that it's, it's happening at cities or at countries where there's already a risk of coastal flooding and sea level rise implications. And one of the key challenges now in studying the land reclamation is the very material of of it. So the main material is sand and what we, my colleagues in, the, in my research laboratory, what we are trying to look is where the sand comes from. Is it coming from the Cambodian forest or Indonesian mangrove forest? But the challenge has been to track and monitor the sand. In my research, I looked at more than 100 cities. In 2016, when the satellite imagery became more accessible, and now you can do a time series analysis, so you could look at 30 years of data set and do a time series analysis in less than an hour. And you look, when I say that, it's, it's about analyzing more than 50,000 uh, satellite images, and it's just for one city. And so I looked at more than 100 cities in different parts of the world to compare the pattern and the trends of, or, of land reclamation in these uh, coastal cities. Uh, I looked at mainly at um, coastal mega cities, so cities where population is more than 10 million. Uh, where, uh, so it includes coastal cities like Mumbai, uh, Shanghai, Jakarta, uh, Lagos in Nigeria. And most, the most unique thing about all of these cities, they have all reclaimed land in the last 10 to 15 years. Of course, the, the size uh, are different. So Shanghai has reclaimed more land than Mumbai has or than Lagos. But they have all started reclaiming land. And I was very much interested in, um, in Western African cities because these are the cities, uh, Lagos and, and Luanda, uh, even Cape Town in South Africa, these cities are also now getting investment uh, from various uh, programs. Uh, one of them is the One Belt, One Road. And uh, they are all part of these mega pro projects. And so they're reclaiming land in order to support the growing demand in these, in these big cities. But this, this trend doesn't really stop in Western Africa. Even in Europe, there are cities, uh, Copenhagen uh, have just, uh, started reclaiming land in a certain part of the of their cities so the port of helsinki for example is is another one where they reclaim land in the last 5 years to expand their their coastal frontier so land reclamation is is not a recent phenomenon it started roughly around the uh, 16th century and the best example is the netherlands where uh, flevo land which was reclaimed it took a while but it was uh, reclaimed for the purposes uh, of, of flood protection or agriculture. So the, the use of reclaimed land at the coast, it, it varies uh, from, from one city to another. For example, in Shanghai, much of reclamation is now used for commercial plantation. So it's basically from satellite images, it looks green. Uh, but when you look at uh, cities like Jakarta, uh, Singapore, um, cities like Lagos in Nigeria, Luanda in Angola, these cities are reclaiming land for uh, residential purposes, but also for ports. So ports are uh, reclaiming land um, at, at, at a significant rate because our global trade and globalization, they are increasing, so the port needs space to grow. So that has been a major land use for land reclamation. But something which is very unique, um, it didn't happen in the 19th century in terms of reclamation. It's something which researchers, they've termed as a prestige construction. It's the construction of the reclamation which is being done for, for pride, really, for prestige. So the, the Palm Jumeirah in, in Dubai or the Radisson Blue Hotel in Panama City, 
Um, these are the kind of structures which, in, which are being built for prestige, for pride, because you have this unique structure which looks very unique uh, from satellite map, but it belongs to a country. And so pride plays a major role uh, in, in building new land and investment really comes from that perspective as well. And one more example of this, this huge structure is in China. Uh, it's called the Two Oceans Island. It's an interesting uh, site because the construction is done. It looks, like a, um, it looks like a bird, but the construction is finished. But a part of it is now being used for an, for an amusement park. It, it promotes economic activity for sure. But again, the question comes for whom? Uh, we are not building land uh, because we are shortage of land. I think we have, we have space. The investment really comes at a cost. So it's not for, for common people. It's not for a middle class person to purchase an apartment there. It's, it is targeting the elite. So it's targeting uh, people with, who can afford to live at that space to have the sea view. What surprised me, me the most uh, in my research, the fact that these cities are, are growing so quickly, they're reclaiming land um, at, a, at a rate less than, less than two or three years, there's a new land being built. And the best example is uh, Dubai, Palm Jumeirah, which was built roughly three and a half years. The Colombo port now is being built uh, just under four years. So it's a huge investment being done. And it's, it's done at a very um, critical place, it's done at a coast. And as we know, coastal regions are at the front line of any change which comes, which comes from the sea. So you're looking at typhoon, you're looking at cyclone and, and flooding. All of these uh, places, the reclaimed land, are being done at a place where they are already susceptible to sea level rise and coastal flooding. So that risk is always there of, of uh, flooding. But also the fact it's the engineering of it, uh, the geography of it is because these land are built on water. And something you build on water, you're building a heavy uh, piece of land on water. So there's always a risk of land subsidence. Uh, land subsidence is, is a phenomenon where the land sinks. Basically, it's, it's about the, the heavy weight of the land. And because you have, you have the heavy weight, there is, the land cannot stand at one place because it's built at a coast. Coastal regions are soft tidal flat regions which are already, they are exposed to land subsidence. And it is a risk because as you see, the sea level is rising. So during a high tide, you will have water flushing into your uh, reclaimed land where you have made a huge investment. So that's part of the, the one who is making the investment, the risk. The next part is the impact of it because um, coastal regions, again, are very sensitive. These are the places where fishing industry thrives or these are places where sensitive marine ecosystem thrives as well. So the impact when you are building a land and putting tons of sand at a, at a coastal region, it impacts the coastal ecosystem in and around that region. Uh, so in, when you talk about why it, it matters, it matters because the both risk and the impact plays a role at the same time when you're building, building a land or when you're reclaiming a land. I look at coastal wetlands and so uh, because most of the reclamation really happens at an expense of coastal wetlands. And the coastal wetlands, they have their own services which we get from them, for example, uh, the protection from huge storm surge. Uh, it it uh, sustains the biodiversity of the coastal regions. But mo more, the most important in terms of the study which I do in Shanghai, uh, in China, is the coastal wetlands there. They support the migratory birds, which they fly from Siberia to India, but they do a stopover in Shanghai, the coastal wetlands. And in Shanghai, there has been uh, reclamation for past 30 odd years, which was stopped last year only. Um, but there was a lot of coastal wetlands which has been lost at the, as a result of reclamation. So when you talk about the ecosystem service, is these kinds of natural services which we get, which, which sustains our, our own ecosystem and the survival of, of 
every, every uh, species on, on dependent on the wetland. So land reclamation uh, in terms when we talk about sustainability of the land, um, also we have to take into consideration the main material of, of a reclaimed land is itself is a non-renewable product. Um, which we which we need to replenish it in order to sustain a land. So the, Dubai is the best example. The world in in Dubai, which is a group of islands being built at the at the sa shallow sea area, it's being it's still under construction because of the very fact that it, the the heavy rate of erosion doesn't let the the land or the sand to stay at one location. So you need to fill it up uh, in order to sustain the land. Uh, for future, but the other other part of sustainability of the reclaimed land um, or even the entire coastal region is where the sand comes from is is also a critical question.